From purposely generating easy scrambles to stopping the timer early to get crazy fast times, here are some of the biggest cheaters in WCA history. This goes without saying, but please do not find these cubers and send hate to them, as it's completely pointless. The first and most notorious cuber was actually one of the greatest of his time, Mayas Kuti. He was an incredibly accomplished cuber with many world records and many championship podiums, and actually more events than Felix, at 11 different WCA events including Magic and Blind, something that has never been done before, and probably never will. But as it turns out, many of these records weren't as they seemed, especially in blindfolded solving, where he held world records in all the events. Today in blindfold competitions, an opaque object is placed between the cuber and the cube to prevent looking under or through the blindfold. Back then, however, this was not a requirement, and there is plenty of evidence that Mayas took advantage of this by looking under the blindfold. Well, what was the evidence? First off was his unusually high success rate, especially for that time. But this evidence is still a bit weak, as his success rate is not too crazy and there are plenty of people today that have similar numbers. But having those high success rates or at a high level is still a bit suspicious. Better evidence is in this clip right here. While not required, sight blockers were sometimes used, and when used here, watch how he suddenly struggles on his solve. And gets a very rare DNF. If that was not suspicious enough, here's the greatest evidence from a report from the WCA. The reconstructions of the solves. So here's the scramble of one of his solves, which I've done twice. At this time, the first step of blindfolded solving is generally to get something like this, oriented corners. So every corner on the top and bottom should be yellow or white. So let's see how he does it. Normally what we have to do is memorize which corners have to be twisted and then do algorithms that only twist those corners and preserve everything else. That way you can track everything else for later. But instead this is what he does. First he brings these corners to the top. Then he literally just does an OLO algorithm for 2x2 two two, like this. Then he flips the cube over. Then does another algorithm on this side. This time an anti soon. Then once again he gets this case which he does here which orients all the corners, but it messes up all the edges pretty much. Because these are all algorithms from 2x2, two two, not algorithms that are designed for blindfolded solving. So when you compare this cube with the original scramble, pretty much all the corners are out of their places, which shouldn't happen, because how would you keep track of it? And look at all the edges, the edges are all also out of place. So how is he even keeping track of things while solving the cube blindfolded? Well, it's because he probably wasn't, and was probably looking under the blindfold for the next steps. As a result of all the evidence of him cheating, there was considered enough to ban him from the WCA and require him to return all the prize money he's won from blind events. The interesting thing is he never did and has never competed since. Did he really cheat? The evidence says yes, but there's no confession, so I guess we'll never know the whole story, his motivations, or how the cubing world would be different if he was never caught. But there was another cuber who also claimed innocence, but this time was never banned, and his result still stands today. That person is Vladislav Ushakov, who got a 19-move FMC single at PSU Open 2016, which was a new world record. At first, it seemed like maybe a lucky solve, but some things just didn't add up. Looking at his previous results, he gets DNFs, 40-move solutions, and 30-move solutions. So how did he jump to a 19-move solution that quick? Even stronger evidence was the solution itself, which ended up being the exact solution that was outputted by Cube Explorer for that scramble, which is a cube-solving computer program. In addition, he was the organizer at that competition. Did he have access to the scrambles ahead of time? Looking at his solution paper, he put a bunch of rotations in, which don't count as moves but still looks really suspicious, as if he was trying to make his solution look different from the computer by adding in rotations. As for the rotations, they didn't make much sense for solving the cube, and maybe looked a bit random. However, his world record was never taken down, and he was never banned. How? Well, there just wasn't enough proof. While his solution was the exact same as the computer, it had some elements that made it look like it was human made, like some of the block building throughout the solve. And he was able to provide a clear enough explanation to the delegate, which allowed the results to be posted to the WCA. But in this next case, it wasn't the organizer that was accused of cheating, it was actually a delegate, assisting another cuber in getting many world records. This was the case of Marcin Zalowski, a multiple time world record holder and 3 blind. And looking at his solves, they seem pretty legitimate. There's a slight blocker, and he's using a legitimate 3 blind method with good turning, and the scrambles do match the scrambles at the competition. But rewind the video a bit. And a bit more. Actually that's as far as it goes, the video starts here. And how about this record? 
Also, the video starts there. Why is this video always cutting off the first few seconds of the solve? Looking at the video of another perspective, we might see why. He almost immediately gets to his orientation of white top, green front, when normally the cube should be in some random orientation, and it takes a bit longer to orient correctly. As it turns out, the delicate was telling him the top color before his solve, making orienting the cube in the beginning easier. While such a minor thing, this offered him an unfair advantage against other competitors, and something had to be done. In addition to these solves being DNF'd, he also received a 2 year ban. As for the delegate that helped him, well he's not a delegate anymore. But how about instead of helping world class Cuber cheat, a delegate cheating himself to get world records? That's the case of Sebastian Pino Castillo, who held the world record single on average for a clock. When looking at this world record, it can be noted that the scrum looks really easy, maybe too easy. When the scrambles were examined for his clock solve, there were just too many lucky scrambles. Huge blocks everywhere, which is analyzed to be statistically almost impossible. Eventually, after an investigation from the WCA, here's a statement they made. After examining evidence presented by various WCA competitors, and examining evidence independently gathered by the IAC, we have determined that Sebastian Pino Castillo manipulated WCA scrambles and gained an unfair advantage in WCA competition. And the WCA took three actions. All the results from the competitions he delegated were removed, he will be banned for two years, and he will no longer be a delegate. Not only did his actions affect him, but what really sucks is it also unfairly affected the many other Chilean cubers who were in his competitions with rig scrambles, who had no idea. As for him, his WCA profile is interesting to say the least, and he hasn't competed since. Breaking clock, FMC, and blindfolded world records by cheating is crazy enough, but how about a 3 by 3 world record single? This is the case of Martin Tlesforo, with a 4.41 single back in 2013. There was a lot of skepticism with this world record immediately. In a competition, he was barely getting sub-20 solves, so how is he getting a sub-5 in competition? There wasn't a video of his solve, but there were videos of the reaction, and his other solves. So how does this turning get a 4 second solve? Even stranger was his solution that he claimed. He claimed to improvise about 20 moves to solve all of F2L and Ola, and got a J to finish the solve. Not only was the F2L way too efficient, but the moves were so random, and also matched the computer when they investigated. That combined with him faking solves in the past, just built so much evidence that this was fake. So how did he do it? Since the competition wasn't too organized, the scrambles seemed to be pretty visible to competitors even before they compete. So there's a good chance he was able to prepare the solution beforehand. But without video, we wouldn't know for sure how he did it. But instead of taking advantage of scrambles and looking under the blindfold, some cubers tried something different, taking advantage of the timer itself. There's one Russian cuber that did this to achieve amazing one handed results by stopping the timer early. Well, normally with one hand solving, you keep one hand on the timer, and the timer still runs until both hands are on the mat. But by using your solving arm, it's very easy to stop the timer early and fake better times, which is what this cuber did, and received a 2 year ban. With his one handed results being way too close to the two handed results, this makes sense. But the more infamous case of this happened in 2019 by a Ukrainian cuber. In this infamous case, the cuber was relatively fast at 3x3, averaging around 10 seconds, which isn't too bad. However, it was definitely not enough for national records, so he used a similar tactic. His solves were all legitimate, but he stops the timer early in the middle of the solve, resulting in what seems like a fast solve on a timer. His result was a national record of 6.2 seconds, which at the time was 1st in his country, 2nd in Europe, and 5th in the world. You can take a look at his best time here. The time on the timer was 5.78 but the video is clearly much longer than that. Looking at his WCA profile, things just get even more suspicious. How does he jump to a low 6 average in his 5th competition? Even though he claims the solves are legitimate, and claims to have a mid 6 average of 100 at home, the real solve time just begs to differ. And even more suspicious, in later rounds, he can barely crack sub 10. In those rounds, the timer display seemed to be working, while in his 6 second average, the display is coincidentally off, which made it harder to keep track of the time. In addition, he was known as doing this with other events as well, so actually all of his results were DNF'd. And that makes his WCA profile quite an interesting one. So thanks for watching, and don't cheat, unless you want to get banned.